So, so today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the very important rules in the rules of professional conduct for legal practitioners. And that's rule 17, which is the rule on uh, conflict of interest. And uh, this rule is basically the rule that states that um, the lawyer um, is not supposed to have anything um, which will constitute, um, uh, uh, which would compromise his independence in his representation of his client. Therefore, you see that at the time of uh, being retained by the client, the lawyer is expected to disclose to the client any circumstance um, of his relations with the parties um, or any interest he has, um, which you know may influence how he acts uh, or how he takes decisions on behalf of his client. Um, so for instance, if the lawyer is um, related to the um, opposing party, and that's something of course that he has to bring to the knowledge of his uh, client. If the lawyer has any business relations with the opposing party, he should tell his client, if he uh, has in the past represented that person, and these are things that could affect his professional judgment. And so it's important that he brings it uh, to the knowledge of his client. And very importantly, um, you see that when the lawyer makes a full disclosure to his client, then with his client's consent, uh, the conflict can be waived. So um, if your client has been made fully aware of whatever conflict exists and your client is still comfortable with um, having you represent them as their lawyer, then that is not a problem. But full disclosure must be made first. And there are, however, circumstances in which um, the rules allow a lawyer to, um, to have a conflict of interests in the relationship with his client. And you can see some of them on the screen here. It says a lawyer may acquire a lien to secure his fees. Um, of course, it, see, um, acquiring a lien is uh, basically where um, you are withholding um, something that belongs to another person in order to enforce payment of fees that are owed to you. So where the lawyer, for instance, is uh, holding back to certain documents belonging to the client um, in order to uh, secure payment of his fees. Um, also listed under sub rule three of that rule 17 of the RPC is where the lawyer enters into a contract for uh, contingency fees in civil cases. Contingency fees are um, success-based fees. So lawyers are permitted to enter into that, those sort of arrangements, arrangements in which um, the uh, client's payment will be predicated on the outcome of the case. So um, no win, no fee, basically. If the lawyer wins that case, then he gets paid. But if he doesn't win the case, he doesn't get paid. So the rules permit the lawyer to enter into that sort of uh, um, agreement with his client, um, and that would not constitute a conflict. Um, so you have to be mindful of one very particular um, incident which would constitute a conflict, and that's where the lawyer um, is handling a brief in which he himself is a party. Now, um, sub rule five of rule 17 um, specifically prohibits a lawyer from appearing as counsel for a client in proceedings in which the lawyer himself is a party. Now, let me explain what this means. Now, that means if the lawyer is a member of a family, for instance, and that family is uh, instituting legal proceedings against another party. Uh, now, that lawyer, being a member of the family and uh, one of the parties in the suit, cannot then himself also be lawyer for the family in that suit. Um, that would constitute um, a conflict of interest. So the RPC, the Rules of Professional Conduct, state that um, a lawyer cannot himself be uh, a party and he cannot be counsel 
I mean, proceedings in which himself is a party. So um, um, a, a, another lawyer would have to be retained um, for that purpose. And then finally, you should also note that where there's a conflict of interest and the lawyer has to refuse to take on a brief, then no other lawyer in his firm can accept that same brief, all right? If as a result of a conflict of interest, a lawyer is unable to take on a client, is unable to take on a brief, um, then no other lawyer in his firm should take on that same brief. It would still um, be a violation of Rule 17, which is the rule on conflict of interest. So that's pretty much in a nutshell what uh, the rule on conflict of interest for legal practitioners is. I hope you've learned something today. And I'll see you another time. Bye-bye.